I just knew today would be different. And he told me, I want you to just, you know, normally I, we might rearrange some furniture up in here, you know, because I get kind of excited. But he told me today, I want you to just really teach the people of God about spiritual authority. And, and he says, and I'm, I'm, I want it to be where you just talk and give them as much information as possible to turn them into weapons of mass destruction for the kingdom of darkness. And so I knew some kind of way I would be kind of, kind of restrained in what I can do. But if I get excited, I'll just run outside, take a lap, come on back in. Because I'm telling you, you are getting ready. You are in it and getting ready to step into the greatest year of your life. The greatest year of your life. Point blank, period. Now, I do want to acknowledge this before I have you to be seated. I realize that half of you have had to battle with depression since last night and yesterday evening, I, I, I felt it when I came in the room. And, and then I saw the woman of God proudly with her Auburn gear on this morning, letting all the Crimson Tide people know about. So I want you to shake that off, okay? So now you know what we feel like in Texas every year. So you won't be going to the playoffs, but it'll be okay. I know how to handle all of that. And so let's just pray and believe God. Father, unload and download your wisdom to us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Ephesians chapter number 6. I do realize that we're in a different type of setting, so I'm going to make sure that I expedite what I'm about to say to you. And, um, and I just want to tell you, your team, your staff, how y'all just pulled all this together is a testament to the leadership of this church. It's just amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number six, let me calm down. I'm so excited. Ephesians 6, and of course, very familiar passage of Scripture. And I'm just going to focus in on verses number 12. Because, verse number 12, because the rest of it will unpack as we go. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I just want to focus on that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we're just going to say against spiritual activity. So what we are fighting is spiritual activity. What you're dealing with over your life, over a, your life, over a family, over a city, over a region, over a state, over a nation, over the earth, what we are dealing with is spiritual activity. And so the thing we must be aware of is how to function in the realm of the spirit. If you're going to see amazing breakthroughs in your life, things have to happen here before they happen in your life. And so to the degree that you're able to plow through in a spirit realm will be the degree of manifestation you see in the natural. Because everything is done by spiritual activity. Now, this revelation I've been ministering a lot at our ministry because ever since we stepped in the year 5780 and we stepped into the decade of declaration and how pay deals with the mouth 
and how the whole understanding of how to weaponize our mouths, how to use our words will determine what type of manifestation that we have on the earth. And so the first thing I want to share with you is the reason God gave you a mouth. If you go back to Genesis chapter number one, and you don't have to turn there, Genesis chapter number one, you're dealing with an earth in chaos. And God is overlooking this disorder and this dysfunction. The, the Bible says the spirit of God is hovering over it. Now we're dealing with a physical earth that is in chaos. A natural realm that is in chaos. And your Bible declares for God to fix all of this chaos and disorder. He didn't move his hand. He opened his mouth. And God said. You got a physical earth that is in total chaos total disorder darkness is upon the whole face of it everything on it has been out of order and frozen and God looks at it and begins to fix it by saying out of his mouth let there be and a physical earth responded to a spiritual God and everything began to be rearranged on the planet which means this earth is voice activated <laughs> oh he, 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 he said, and the physical earth was rearranged by the word of God. I want you to think about that for a moment. Because when God said, the Holy Spirit was hovering. And when God released his word, it is synonymous with authority. So when I say word, you say authority. Word. Authority. Word. Authority. And so when God released his word, which means God uses his mouth as the release valve for his authority. Amen. That's why whatever God says has to be done. Because God's words are the release and his mouth is the release valve of his authority. That's why the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Yeah. Not that God won't lie, God can't lie. Because if God said tomorrow is Thursday, guess what? You don't hear what I'm saying. It might have been Monday, all these other, yeah, but when he said it, why? Because when he speaks, he releases authority. And so the outlet of God's word is the release of his authority. 